Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Jewell with the CTE Foundation and I'm here with Killian Riddell of Medtronic. You are a Principal Regulatory Affairs Specialist. Is that is that right, Killian? That's right, yeah. So okay. uh, I work on a team within Medtronic that uh, helps get patients access to new and life-saving technologies, so typically medical devices. Tell me uh, just a quick elevator pitch about Medtronic, um, and then I'd like to hear what you do on a daily basis as a Principal Regulatory Affairs Specialist. Sure. So Medtronic is a global company that's responsible for getting medical devices to treat patients to either alleviate pain, restore life, and just help improve the overall quality of life. From life-saving technologies through to minimally invasive technologies. And I'm part of a team that helps develop those products, uh, working with regulators around the world, getting those products approved and in the hands of physicians to treat patients. Um, it's a uh, it's a, a very, it's, it's got a lot of variety as a role. So on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not really doing the same thing. Um, you work with people from different backgrounds that are focused on whether it's research and development and innovation or clinical study design, all the way through to marketing and, and publication of either the study data or the actual devices. And then outside of the company, then working with government bodies like FDA, and regulators within Europe and around the world to uh, make sure all of the data are there to support the safety and efficacy of devices. So it's quite a diverse role. Hmm. And I suppose that, that's, that there's a lot to have to work with when you're dealing with something that could go into a human body and save a life, that there's a lot of regulations around that and just safety precautions. There is, yeah, and that's that's one of the things I'm proud about Medtronic, that it's it's written into the code. We have a mission that each one of our employees uh, adheres to where you're putting patient safety first. So all of these regulations are in place to protect the patient, and ultimately what you want to do on a day-to-day -day basis is contributing to patient welfare. So what you touch touches the patient eventually. So it's it's quite a rewarding company to work with, and it's nice to know what you do impacts lives. So, well, you know, one of my questions was going to be, what do you like about your job? And I think you just answered that, um, and, and, and it's that impact that you can have on people's lives, and especially saving lives. I think that's a really noble thing. Um, but does that, is that also why you got into this career? I'd like to hear about how you decided to, to follow this career path. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, right now it is. It is. I'm very motivated by what we do and, and how it helps people. But if I think back to when I was in high school, um, I grew up in Ireland. So our equivalent was um, secondary school. And when I tried to figure out what I wanted to do in college, I looked around me and, and science is what I was interested in. So I, I went on and I did a bachelor's of science first. And I was I was always interested in problem solving, um, understanding the world around us, and also on the medical side, really interested in the human anatomy and physiology. So I, I took that, that leap, um, and I'd encourage anyone that's looking to do something in your university is to figure out what it is that you like to do and just go after that because you'll be happy in, in just attending your classes, attending your labs, and, and everything else will go from there. Um, after I did my bachelor's, then I, I did a, a master's. So I did um, a master's in neuropharmacology. And ultimately, I knew I didn't want to stay in academia. I wanted to get in industry and, and start contributing to the, the, the kind of development of technologies that could help alleviate pain and, and impact patient life. So from there, I, I found my way into Medtronic um, and I worked in the analytical side of things. So looking at the combination of medicines with devices and helping again in the development of those and commercialization. Um, from there, then once I was within Medtronic, you know, I've, I've, I've had a, a diverse background within the company, looked at different roles. And each time I, I felt like I had learned as much as I could in a certain area, I'd look across the, the board and see, well, where can I put my current skills to use and what else can I learn? 
and how can I kind of grow my 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 scope and what I want to go after and that's ultimately what left me in the or led me to the position that I'm in right now so it's uh it's a position that you see across a lot of different areas and you have uh, a technical background that you can contribute to and again part of that team that helps get these products out to patients so it's it's very rewarding it it is a a storied path. It certainly wasn't a case that I was 16 and I said, I want to be a principal regulatory affairs specialist. But it was, you know, starting on that path of loving what you do, being interested, it, it helps drive that, that motivation to go after something bigger. So at what point in your career path did you uh, move from Ireland to Santa Rosa? That's, uh, yeah, that's about coming up on nine years now. So it was, uh, it was a, an opportunity that presented itself within the same function that I was working in to look at a different part, more on the R&D side of things rather than the commercialization. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was ready for a new challenge. Um, who doesn't want to come to California? It's a beautiful area. We have a, a strong connection with the facility that we had here. And when I got a chance to try something new in my career uh, and an advancement and try and live somewhere differently and different lifestyle, I kind of couldn't say no. Well, I think it's great that you, out of all the options that you had, that you chose to come to Sonoma County. I think that's really neat. Um, I think so- it's a testament. I think it's a testament to the fact that we, we did come here and, and we haven't left. Um, and I would say the more I explore within California, never mind outside of California, and when I come back north of the Golden Gate Bridge, it just makes me love this place even more. It's a little piece of paradise. So what, uh, what skills, training, uh, and, and schooling would one need in order to get into a role like what you have? Yeah, um, I would say... The role that I'm in has lots of different backgrounds. We have a collection of folks with strong technical backgrounds, so scientists and engineers help out there. Um, We have folks in the quality engineering, so the design assurance engineering, and we'd have folks from legal, so uh, law school lawyers, we'd have had, we have folks on our team from that background. And I would say if you're technical and you have um, a desire to go into engineering, um, that's, that's a great path in having some form of biomedical science helps and also, uh, you know, some time in the industry itself lends you to understanding the product development pathway and the requirements. So you're exposed to a lot of that stuff through on the job training. Um, but again, it, 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 we have a wide net. So we do catch different folks with different backgrounds and we all bring um, a variety of perspectives that help with the overall development process. So I assume to be a regulatory affairs specialist, once they have the experience under their belt with the company, have some background and understanding of it, that would help them move into a position like that. Is that, is that would you well, agree? Is that sort of what you're saying? Well, that, that, yes, that, that is one avenue, but there are university courses in regulatory affairs. Oh. You, can, you can actually take courses in that and you will come out of university well-versed in the regulations. Mm-hmm. I guess what I was just making sure to kind of get across is if, if you don't know enough about regulatory affairs and want to go after that individual course, it's still an option that's open to you at a later stage, depending on your technical path or legal path. So you have many ways to get in. Thanks for clarifying that. So my, my last question, um, would you give a piece of advice to those students that are watching this right now? Sure. Find what it is you like doing, what you're passionate about. Focus your, your next step in education and or other based on what motivates you. So if you're motivated by problem solving or technical aspects, um, that, you know, an engineering degree might be something that's worthwhile. But whatever it is that you find that works for you, everything else will come along a lot easier and you'll be able to manage, you know, unforeseen shifts one way or another. 
no no career path is perfectly laid out. There's always surprises around the corner and there's always equally opportunities that present themselves. So if you know what you like and you're, you're, you're comfortable in that space, it helps you take the next step. So either a change in career direction like I have done within the company or perhaps you change even within your, um, your major. So find what it is you like first and that adaptation into university or other life outside of high school, it'll make things a lot easier. Okay, well I appreciate the uh, words of advice and I also appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today on this interview. All right, Brendan, thanks. See ya. Take care.